Hey everyone, recently armor gems got added to the game, and I think they're pretty pretty cool. I guess recently is kind of inaccurate considering the update came out that date, and it's beginning of October when I'm writing this, so maybe I'm a little bit late to the party. Making this video I'm actually even even later, because considering the fact that these machines were kind of designed like a few months ago, I should have really made this video sooner. Oh well, who cares about time anyways? If the first best time was before, then the second best time to do something is now. So, let's kind of introduce the problem. Today is, well, whatever it is for you. But we're gonna backtrack a little bit, and now, today is September 23rd, and the update just got released. Now, upon opening the creative menu, you now notice that we have a plethora of different armor trims. And you, the ever-completionist, wants to collect every single one. There are 15 different armor trims, but wait, there's also 10 different materials you can combine any given armor trim with, and also a plethora of different armor that you can actually put it on. But there's also like a gazillion different combinations that you can use on a single armor stand, with a bajillion different kinds of trims on any kind of piece of armor. Anyways, after a bunch of really, really big math that a bunch of random people I don't know did basically for me, you get this number, and in word form, it's this number if you want to read that in chat. This number is courtesy of NinjaGo31 on Reddit. Incomprehensibly large numbers aside, we now have a problem. I want to store all of them. But in all honesty, we're only going to be storing some of this incredibly large number because after about four digits, my computer is going to be fried. Personally, I don't like it when my processor is glowing, so we'll be settling with, I don't know, some smaller number. So today's video is, I guess, about how we managed to store that small number of armor stands in this incredibly small space. And when I said small space there, I was actually lying, but we'll get to that. Ultimately, what I settled with in the beginning was these four design constraints. I didn't care about how big it eventually got, but I wanted to be able to access all of them without moving because I'm very lazy. It should be somewhat fast, it should have a decent user interface, I should just be able to put in a number to get the armor stand I want, and it should also store more armor stands than I could possibly need. That last criteria is kind of really easy to hit because I usually only end up using about two armor stands in any given survival run, but we'll be shooting for it anyways. So let's talk about what the plan is. Basically, we're going to have a cycler of armor stands, and the player is going to be able to stand at a single location, and all the armor stands will simply loop around such that they can access it. In order to select it, we'll give each armor stand at any given point a number, and keep cycling it until the amount of items inside a container that we've set is fully depleted. If we put 64 items, it's going to cycle it 64 times before giving us our armor stand, and that will essentially be armor stand 64. Overall, the idea is pretty straightforward, so let's get out of the planning phase and actually start designing something. So if we want to create a sort of vertical cycler that we wanted to design, we're going to have to figure out a way to increment the height of these armor stands very reliably. And the way we're going to be using is trapdoors, because if I put an armor stand above a bunch of trapdoors, open them all briefly at the same time, then we can get this armor stand to drop down, and once it reaches the bottom, well, we can figure out how to bring it all the way up again. But what's super neat is that we can just keep adding armor stands. They'll always retain their height, and we can keep them in a single loop without ever interfering with each other. What's even more interesting about the utilization of trapdoors, though, is that they have two different states. If we put them at these two different heights and then put an armor stand right down the middle, then we can actually increment the height of the armor stand with a greater level of precision. But this comes with a bit of a problem. In order to actually increment the height of this armor stand, we need to more finely tune how long we're keeping these trapdoors open. Simply just powering it with a two-tick observer pulse causes it to very clearly drop down two layers, instead of ending up on this other trapdoor like we want. However, if we go too far, and we end up using a zero-tick pulse, we're not going to get anywhere, because this pulse is actually too short for the armor stand to even fall one level. In order to garner any use out of the setup, we need to create a reliable way of creating a single game-tick pulse, or exactly half of that of an observer pulse. 
And after a little bit of fiddling around, I actually realized that, hey, maybe I can use a little bit of leaf stone to make my job a little easier. And this actually ends up working. As you can see, the armor stand drops only a single level every time we hit the button. And if we actually take a look at this thing, you'll see that it's pretty simple. If we go ahead and freeze the game, power this, tick tap 2, 4, ticks forward, this observer ends up right here. It's going to power all of our trap doors, but unfortunately, it's about to get moved back out of the way by this sticky piston. Luckily though, we've put a log in a leaf block, which adds an extra game tick of delay, meaning that when this observer powers, it has exactly one tick to keep this trap door on, before this observer gets the memo from the leaf, and that's going to cause the sticky piston to move the observer, unpowering these trap doors. Unfortunately though, this thing has one flaw, and that it's a little bit slow. Even though it looks fast, we're going to be cycling things super quickly to get through the large amount of armor stands we'll have, and the non-spam ability of this thing just really doesn't cut it. Thus ends the usefulness of the leaf block, now we're actually just going to replace it with its vastly superior and more reliable cousin, Scaffold. This thing is so much faster. So now that we've got the incrementer done, let's talk about getting the armor stance from the bottom all the way back to the top. If we set this up in a little bit of a longer loop, then we can see that we can pretty easily manage the armor stand as it goes down. Once it reaches the bottom, it's pretty much just about as simple as shoving it into a bubble column and sending it all the way back to the top. But wait, sending it up the bubble column takes ages, and if we're going to have to do that wait every single time we want to do one cycle, then it defeats the whole purpose of making this thing fast. But there's a tiny little fix that just so happens to double our storage. By putting a simple grindstone here, we actually stop the armor stands halfway inside the trapdoors and halfway inside the bubble column. What this essentially allows us to do is create the same cycler interval blah 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 blah, except now it's going to be happening on the upwards edge. As you can see, this armor stands inside the bubble column and it wants to go up, and it's going to do the same exact thing as our armor stands going down, only going back up to the top again. Combining this with the already existing double layer density, we can actually store as many as four armor stands per Y level that our cycler occupies. So now let's step away from the main mechanics and now let's talk about some logistics, because it is quite a big jump from this lanky skeleton of a design to this giant heap of messy redstone wiring. One of the first problems that we have to solve with our logistics system is how our machine even keeps track of the armor stands that we're storing. If we want to go to armor stand 4, for example, it's pretty simple. We just go 1, 2, 3, 4 steps forward in our cycler. But if we want to, for example, request armor stand 4 again, well, that just means armor stand 8 is going to become the new armor stand 4 because we didn't reset the machine. Since we didn't reset it, we're just going to go another 4 steps forward, and pretend like this is armor stand 4, even though it's way over there. What we need to do is actually keep track of how far we've gone, subtract it from the total number of armor stands so we can loop that much back, and land ourselves all the way back at zero, ready to receive another request. The way this logistics system actually works in practice is that the machine has two modes. The first mode is actually going to the armor stand that we've requested. If we put an 8 in here, it's going to count to 8, well actually 9 because of some other stuff, and it's going to sit here. Now, once we put the armor stand away, it's actually going to take all the items that it didn't count, the rest of the armor stands, and recount through all those, cycling back the information that we left behind, bringing us all the way back to 0. Our next question is how do we actually access the armor stand that we want to interface with? If we just simply access it directly from the loop, it's going to get pretty difficult because with the way how our system works is it's so dense with armor stands, there's like four armor stands in this one block alone, and it's going to be really difficult to access any actual armor pieces. In order to actually make this practical, we need to sort of pull it out, and the way we do that is by using this little slime block pusher to take this end rod and completely just punch out the top one and land it right in front of us. And if we actually do that, and put in a number right here. 
it's going to eject it and put it right in front of us. After we take whatever armor we want and put it onto it, we can actually just hit this button again and it's going to launch it upwards and push it back into the cycler and begin resetting to zero. I really don't want to get into the details of how this actually works timing wise and why there's an amethyst bud here, but basically just trust me on the fact that it took a really long time to make sure that the armor stand that we pulled out ends up exactly where we pulled it out from as to not make armor stands overlap in their spots. Now that we've essentially covered all of the actual topics and the mechanics of stuff like that, and before we get into the whole, did we actually solve the problem, I'd like to say if you like the kind of content that I make and the stuff that I put out, make sure to check out the other videos on my channel, as well as like and subscribe for the other stuff that I'm working on. Now on to the actual thing. Did we solve the problem? It's really up to anyone's interpretation, but as the person who built it, my personal opinion is that we kind of definitely did not. The thing about this thing is that it's hilariously impractical, really poorly designed, and absolutely giant. You'd be much better off storing the 54 armor stands that this thing stores in just a simple neat hallway in roughly half the space, and that would work significantly better, significantly faster, and be much more aesthetically pleasing. But ultimately, solving the problem I guess wasn't entirely the point, I just wanted a reason to ridiculously over-engineer a problem to the point where you basically caused more problems with the solution than the problems you've actually solved. And looking past all the multitudes of totally incompetent design flaws, I can at least take solace in the fact that it does have some form of idiot protection. So, that'll be it for today's video. As again, if you like the kind of stuff that I make and the content that I put out, make sure to check out the other videos on my channel, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.